Have you ever considered what you might wear and pack to travel to safety if the world went pear-shaped? Here's my selection. G'day, welcome to Bootlosophy. Uh, my name is Tech. I acknowledge the traditional custodians of the lands I'm recording on, the Wajik people. Now, let's start with the premise of what I'm thinking about. Um, let's say the world uh, goes pear-shaped in the summertime. I don't know, maybe the uh, threat of nuclear kaboom uh, about to go off, or the aliens have landed, or uh, uh, a zombie virus has been released somewhere. So you decide that it's not a great idea to stay in the metropolitan area and time to travel to a safer, uh, rural and quiet area that isn't going to attract attention for at least a few months while things settle down. So in my case, in the summer, I'm thinking of the edge of the Gibson Desert, about uh, 1,700 kilometers northeast of Perth. I have some Aboriginal friends there living in a remote community uh, at the edge of the desert, and really, it's a road on the way to nowhere. I'm going to make it easy for myself though. I'm going to assume that I'll be able to drive most of the 1700 Ks because I start early, say, before other people uh, get the gist and start to panic and clog the roads and, and maybe the crazy start. So I have a Toyota Land Cruiser Prado uh, with two full tanks that should get me up to about 1500 Ks uh, at least. And by assuming by that stage all the petrol stations have been emptied or vandalized, I'll assume I won't be able to refuel and I may then have to walk 100 to 200 k's. Uh, by that stage of the journey though, it should be sparse trees and mostly desert savanna grassland, not hard to walk through and with some cover if I have to hide. Over that sort of terrain, I'm estimating say 10 days walking the 100 to a couple of 100 k's. Uh, it is the Australian summer in the north though, which means it's sub-monsoonal and it might rain heavily a day or two. Uh, but hopefully cyclones from the Pilbara don't creep over into the desert. Temperatures will be up to maximums of 40 centigrade, and at nights uh, they'll be down to about 15 centigrade. So I will need to plan my packing accordingly. Let's start with boots, of course. I'm going to need a pair that's uh, at least 5 inches tall to protect my feet, ankles, and uh, even my calves against abrasion and bug bites and so on. Now, I did consider P&W boots like the, uh, the White MP boots, which are certainly tough enough. I love these. Uh, and they will protect my feet and ankles even against bites. But I discarded them because I think they may be too thick and really these are quite heavy. I also considered the uh, Bordon Tucano in wax suede. Now, these are definitely lighter and more breathable, waterproof, and they feel supportive. But I still feel that they are a little too much for what I need. So I finally settled on a lighter pair of boots, the Estorflex Bitflex Chelsea boots. Now, I thought Chelsea boots may be better for a quick on-off if I'm in a hurry in the, in the fleeing. They're very light, and while the suede is uh, nowhere near as thick uh, as the leather on the MPs or the uh, Bordon, I'm not exactly having to find protection against animals with big teeth, right? Just basically bugs at ground level. Also, this suede is very breathable and, uh, and should be comfortable in the day's heat. The soft crepe soles, and the, they're exactly the same as those used by the uh, British forces during uh, World War II in the North African campaign, uh, because they were comfortable in the sand and soft and quiet for sneaking around in the desert. So what's good for them is probably good for me. As a second choice, I'm thinking of this pair of RM Williams uh, Goodwood Chelsea boots. Very similar reasons, but it's a little bit heavier and um, over 200 k's, I'm wondering if I'd appreciate a, a lighter boot. I haven't really made up my mind uh, because maybe the RM Williams Goodyear Welt might actually hold up better than the Astoflex Stitch Down. What do you think? Uh, in terms of clothing, it's going to be hot in the day and cold at night, but despite the heat, I'm not going to wear shorts because I feel uh, I'm going to need protection against sharp rocks, uh, sharp, hard, grass tufts, that's called spinifex, uh, and certainly bugs like spiders and centipedes. <laughs> now, I'm not too concerned about snakes though, because unless you surprise them in hollow logs or something, they generally hear you coming and they get out of the way. Uh, also, I may have to hide, you know, lie down and uh, crawl over sharp rocks. So long pants it is. 
uh, but I don't want anything hot like denim. So I decided on Flint and Tinder's uh, 365 pad. The 8 ounce material is strong, uh, but it's also light and very breathable. Now, while it is 98% cotton, the 2% spandex will make it comfortable for stretching and crouching while I'm hiding behind a bush. The jean style five pocket design will be used for carrying small EDC tools. Now for my second pair, I mean, um, uh, pants might tear and there'll be laundry days, right? <laughs> for my second pair, I chose a, a similar pair from RM Williams called their Loxton jeans. Uh, these are also five pocket design, 98% uh, cotton twill, 2% elastane. Again, breathable, slightly stretchy and comfortable. The grey and the sand colours will help me blend in against sandy desert terrain uh, and grey eucalyptus bushes. As for shirts, I'm going to wear long sleeves despite the heat. I can always roll them up, right? Uh, because I'm going to need sun and abrasion protection, frankly. So I will bring a long sleeve Australian khaki work shirt. This one is made by uh, Unit. Uh, simple cotton elastane material, two pockets in the chest for more storage. For the second, my laundry day shirt, a 100% cotton Timberland shirt. Again, you know, both colours are unobtrusive in the dirt and bush. And this light cotton tree, you know, it'd be fine for sun protection, but it'd also be uh, quite cooling in the desert uh, heat. Uh, I will, however, bring a jacket for warmth. Uh, the desert nights will be cold and on some days when it's too hot to travel, I might actually lie low during the day and then uh, travel at night. So having a warm layer would be good. I would pack this light uh, puffer jacket, which keeps me warm in temperatures down to 10 Celsius. And for a bonus, falls away into nothing like this. As for other clothing, I will pack a kefir scarf. Now, this is not a political statement, but I've used this for years in the central desert lands. In sunny days, you can uh, uh, wrap it around your head against the sun, and in the evenings, it acts as a, as a warm neck scarf. I'll also bring merino wool socks, uh, which are antimicrobial, so they won't stink, and you can wear them multiple days before washing. Uh, and they are also temperature regulating, so they won't heat up your feet. Uh, I'm going to bring probably a pair of swimming shorts in case I need to cool off at water holes uh, and against the sun uh, I'll have this trusty old Akubra wide brim hat that's been with me for over 20 years. I'll just round off quickly on other equipment. I'll bring an insulated sleeping bag. Uh, I have one that uh, also like my puffer jacket really folds up into nothing and it's also pretty warm. Now I can't hunt for noodles. <laughs> But let's assume I'm a bush craftsman and I can hunt. I'll take a knife and a Gerber multi-tool and uh, I, I assume ropes and other things that I can make MacGyver-like traps to hunt small wallabies, uh, baby kangaroos and emus. I may be able to fish though, and that I can do, so I will bring fishing hooks and uh, fishing lines. Of course, I'll have fire lighting stuff. Uh, there should be plenty of uh, uh, dry firewood and uh, protected matches and tinder should be enough. Water should be reasonably available, funnily enough, because I will cross steam, uh, streams and there will be springs in the area that I already know of. However, they're far apart, so if I had to rely on, say, stagnant billabongs, I will take water purifiers. To top it all off, I'm going to put everything into a light, summerweight backpack, and I think it will be this Gutium canvas backpack. Uh, this one is untreated canvas. And I think the night before I leave, I'm going to have to need to, uh, to wax this. However, it is very light, plenty of pockets, and at 30 litres, should be able to take everything. In summary, obviously, I'll pack light, uh, because my premise is a 10-day walk through 200 kilometres of bush. You can see from my choices that, uh, dictated by the weather and the terrain, I chose a blend of things that didn't need to be the most sturdy, but they were light and uh, easy to use. And once I got to my friends, I'm assuming that I don't need any crazy, super tough, you know, P&W boots uh, and other gear that's like that. Uh, they have a well-run community that feeds itself and they have comfortable, if potentially overcrowded, housing. 
So that's my stupid fun imagining of what might happen if the world goes totally pear-shaped over the summer. And I'll have to get to a destination and then hide out for a few months. I hope you join me in the fun. <laughs> Don't forget to click on like. Let me know what you might pack in your own country and terrain and climate uh, that you have to cross. Next week, or, or I think maybe the week after, I'll do a crazy imagining of what would happen if the world went crazy over winter. Make sure you subscribe and watch for that. Until then, take care to avoid the zombies and see you again soon.